Hi guys, it's Lynn here. I hope everyone is having a blooming wonderful day. Now in this video I'm going to be talking to you about spider mite damage and uh, what to look for on your cactus plants, in particular Lophophora, commonly known as the peyote cacti. And I have quite a lot of different types of Lophophoras in my collection. I have some inside the house and these are ones that we have out in the polytunnel that we keep out all the time. And I'm happy to say that up until now I've, I've had obviously spider mite particularly on Lophophoras in the past quite a lot um, but since I've been using horticultural neem oil I've had no problems I use it quite very regularly all through the summer the spring summer and into the early fall I spray all the plants in the polytunnel here as you can see I have a very large collection and I keep it keep use it about once every two to three weeks give them a, a good spray with the neem oil and I have to say since I've been using it I've practically seen zero mealybug and if I see any pests at all it's very minimal including on the Lophophoras but we've recently obviously now now we've come into the winter I don't spray them with the neem oil in the winter unless I see any signs of pests and then I will spray it but obviously my, my goal here with the winter those of you who grow cacti succulents will know you have to keep them as dry as possible particularly the desert types and the, the humidity down if you live in an area where I am, I'm in, I'm in Northern Ireland and uh, Ireland and the UK in general is very high in humidity. So when you've got plants outdoors in greenhouses and polytunnels, the humidity is always the problem. And I've got, as I say, mentioned, mentioned I recently did a video on this amazing dehumidifier that we've got here in the polytunnel. It works incredible and it's been keeping the humidity down to about 50%. We have it on for about... 10 hours during the day and it's absolutely marvellous guys I mean it feels like a living room in here still keeps the temperature cool for them to overwinter but it's been great with the humidity it used to be about 85 sometimes 90 percent humidity before we got the dehumidifier and the reason I've gone off topic a little bit here is because this is to do with what I'm talking about here I've never ever usually had a problem with spider mite in the winter it's, to me it's always been a spring summer an early fall type of problem because that's when it's sunny and drier and and that's when that this annoying pest that is practically invisible to see unless you've got amazing eyesight tends to take over and you usually see the damage afterwards and I've never had it in the winter because obviously I just haven't mainly because of the high humidity here even in the polytunnel but because the air is so much drier now this is the first winter I've noticed this and look at this guys you can clearly see that this Lophophora here has got a uh, the classic signs of spider mite and if you're not familiar what it looks like this is why I wanted to show you in this video it's this typical sort of um, orangey yellow corkiness that appears usually in the new the new growth on uh, Lophophora um, it, it's very disfiguring and as I say I've had it a lot of times in the past on Lophophora so I have a the cacti and I've always been able to treat it the neem oil works really well but because I haven't been using it for the past past probably the past two months really uh, I stopped using it sort of the end of September because I want to keep the humidity down you can clearly see the drier air now in our polytunnel has clearly encouraged the spider mite to go rampant so this is what obviously I'm going to be treating this with neem spraying this hole and all the nearby plants with it as well and probably um, with a dehumidifier which will dry pretty quick so it's not going to stay damp but I've got three different stages to show you of what spider mite does on uh, Lophophoras now this as I said, my life have had past damage years ago. This one, probably about five years ago, was absolutely covered in um, the scabby, the orange scarring scabs from uh, spider mite. And as you can see now, it's completely recovered. There's tiny little remains of it lower down. As it outgrows the damage, um, the new growth will grow and the, the scabbiness will go down. And I'm happy to say it very rarely will kill a plant. I mean, if you leave it, or you don't notice it and it completely covers the plant then obviously you can a plant can die from spider mite especially if you've got it on one of the plants that are hairy and you don't see the spider mite because it's covered by the white hairs Lophophora is very noticeable and i have to say this spider mite it spreads so fast because only the other day i go in here very regularly although it's winter i'm always checking the plants in the polytunnel and this is the, the first i've seen of this so obviously i'm going to treat this today with the neem oil but look at that already you can clearly see how um, it's caused damage and also this one nearby look at that one I mean you can see all the orange scarring on it as well on there 
Um, and also the signs on this one as well. This one was always a bit scabby. This is a very, very old Laffer 4 that I've had for over 25 years. Got it, it's a tiny button. And it's had, obviously, spider mite over the years, always been treated and it's recovered well. But that's clearly a new sign of it there. You can clearly see. Um, that as well has had past damage. And these ones as well, they're pretty, luckily all the other ones around it seem to be pretty much okay, except for this one. Now this one here, obviously that's, this has had past spider mite damage in the past. This is another very old Laffer 4 of mine. And you can see that orange scabbiness is past damage from about a couple of years ago, before I really started using the neem properly. And you can see that's the new growth there. It's all fresh green growth and eventually that will outgrow and this will go further down the bottom of the plant and it won't show. But... I'm just sort of happy I've spotted it now because it's very, I've never had this in the winter, but it must be down to the fact that the, the, the air humidity now is much drier and they're used to the higher humidity, which is, by the way, high humidity on cacti is far more detrimental than drier air because it caught, they can damp, go rotten and damp and moulds and fungus and things like that. The plants are feeling amazing now with this new dehumidifier we've got. But as I say, obviously the spider might love the drier air at this time of year, which I've never had a problem before. So this is what it looks like. If you see that on your plants, it's usually more common in spring, summer or the early, or usually during high temperatures also if you grow your plants indoors inside the house you're more likely to see spider mite again down to the drier air which they love especially if it's warm too but the good news is if you spot it early enough it's easily treatable this will be treated today with neem oil and um, the same with this one here i'm going to spray obviously the whole entire collection and all the plants around the area as well so um, although i don't normally use the neem spraying it anyway as a foliar spray in the winter because i like to keep them dry i think it's a must when something like this happens because this annoying pest will completely over it. I mean spider mite will take your collection over. Um, personally in my experience I find spider mite can be selective with what type of cacti and succulents they like. You can have certain plants next to uh, the plant that's got it and that the spider mite won't want to know it. They seem to be selective but Lophophorus they love um, they really do. So there you go. That's what it looks like. Um, that's also these two are in the prime now of having the bad attack. And um, this is a past recovery one. But obviously it's so close to these that this is going to, to go on to the new growth if I don't treat this. So then how do you treat it? Well, I like to use um, no neem oil. The spider mite is a bit of a difficult one because a lot of normal uh, uh, insecticides will treat thrips, green fly, mealybugs and the like, but they're often not very good on spider mite unless it actually states it on the bottle. And I found neem oil has been absolutely brilliant. As I say, we had very, very warm summer. We had a very warm April and May and August was lovely weather here in, in Northern Ireland and, and Ireland in the UK in general and never had a problem with it because I was using the neem. And I find I'm going to start using this again just on, onto these here and the nearby plants. And I'm going to then do it again, repeat it again a few days after and then a few days after. With the neem oil, you do have to repeat it every few days over the first month to make sure you kill any of the um, remainder. It usually kills them, kills them pretty quick, but neem oil is a slower acting. If you use a systemic insecticide, it usually kills them straight away on contact. Neem oil is a bit slower, but it's much safer. With a lot of chemical um, insecticides, they can also cause, on Lophophorus anyway, a lot of skin damage, and then you end up looking worse than it did when it had the spider mite. So neem oil is my, my recommendations, and then using it every few days for the month until you know that all of the um, they're all gone and all the newly hatched ones that, that when I say newly hatched I mean the spider mites are all gone as well and if you want to know how to use neem oil as um, an insecticide for mealybug and spider mite and other insects and also as a fungicide as well then do check out a video I've made on how to use neem oil on Lophophora cacti and other types of cacti links will be up above and down below in the video description. And if you want to know how to care for Lophophora, the peyote cactus, then also check a video I've made on how to care for Lophophora, the peyote cactus. Links also up above and down below in the video description. So guys, I hope you found that useful and hopefully you won't have this annoying pest. If you grow cacti succulents for, for any short period of time, you'll, I'm pretty sure you, you'll encounter this annoying pest on your plants at some point. And if you want to know a little bit more on how to grow and care for cacti suckers, then as well as subscribe to my channel, please also check out my website, desertplantsofavalon.com. I want to send you loads of love, heaps of happiness, 
and tons and tons of plant power from across the Emerald Isle. And until my next video, bye. Ah, I'm going to get you, you little spider mites.